Yo, what's up guys, it's Adrian here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn your static landing pages into fully responsive designs right inside Figma. If you're a designer serious about your value on the job market, responsive design and knowledge of the web development practices is a must have. So let's cover that in today's video. Before we start, let me know down in the comments below if you're interested in a follow-up where I take this finished design and turn it into a fully responsive real website using Framer. Let's dive in and start designing. Let's pick up where we left off last time and turn this fixed with a desktop layout we created in our previous tutorial and turn it into a fully responsive design using auto layout and a few resizing properties. So if you've watched our previous tutorial about the box model, uh, you're probably familiar with the basics of designing for web development in mind. But if you didn't, however, it's best if you watch it first. So I'll put the link to that video right in the top right uh, corner of this video. So make sure to watch it first before you continue. All right, so to get started, we need to make sure that this design is capable of scaling down and adapting to different screen resolutions and different devices. And we'll be using a combination of auto layout and responsive properties to achieve this effect. Let's look at this design and start cleaning it up. Now, if I click on this layout and start dragging it left and right, you'll see that it's not uh, collapsing when we drag past the minimum device breakpoint, which is which should be right around here. And to fix this, we'll start by changing this fixed width frame into an all layout frame. So let's click Shift plus A, and now we'll see that all of the elements fit nicely, and the additional space on the bottom has been cut out. If we uh, scroll left and right, you'll see that nothing happens. Still, we'll need to go over each of those uh, containers and the elements nested inside of them and make sure that the resizing properties are uh, set correctly. Let's start with the header first and we'll just continue uh, going down. Our header is set to fix. To make it responsive, we need to make sure it's filling the entire container that is set on this uh, main frame. Right now, if we go into the container nested inside of our header, we need to make sure that it's set to fill container and that the auto layout facing is set to auto and it's aligned in the center. If I drag right and left, you will see that our header just turned a responsive. That's our first step already done. Now let's continue to the hero section and we'll do the same thing. So we'll turn this frame into a auto layout frame. So let's click shift plus A. Let's change the resizing properties to fill container because again, we want this hero section to fill the entire uh, fixed width frame. Maybe I'll just call it desktop um, just so it's easier to reference. Our hero container is set to fill and that's fine. One more thing, you need to set some margins on the side and right now, uh, we set it at 96 and if you remember from our previous tutorial uh, that's because we set this grid to be 1248 and we'll need to change the layout grid uh, type from center to stretch and make sure that the margin is still at 96 pixels and the gutter is set at 20. For now let's uh, remove the layout grid from view so let's click ctrl and g and go back to our hero section. Let's go into a container and make sure that this container is also set to fill container and let's go inside of our container to our left column make sure it's set to fill and it is and let's go to our right column and turn this static frame into a auto layout frame so shift plus a and you'll see some wonky stuff happening right now so uh what you will need to do uh, is select your background here and then make sure this obsolete position is clicked on now just use the alignment uh, settings to position it in the center and make sure it's placed behind your a MacBook Air. And once we're here, change the fill of the resizing property of this image to fill container, both on the horizontal and vertical axis. And let's click on the image here inside and change the, this from crop to fit. And let's go back to our left column and make sure that the copy container is also set to fill because it needs to fill the left column. And our text container is set to fill. CTA container, we can set it at hug. Uh, that's not a problem for, for us. And call out, yeah, let's also chan change this to fill, but our text, we might want to change it to hug because we don't want it to fill the entire frame here. We just want it to be nicely compact. Okay, so let's uh, go into our text container and make sure our both of our text layers are set to fill. And let's see if it's if it's working right now. So let's uh, select your desktop frame and then hover over the edge of the screen and drag it right. And you'll see that the image uh, resizes slightly, like becomes bigger. And the text is also trying to fill the container, which is now taking up much more space than before. Okay, so let's uh, change the width to 1440 again and um, add some responsiveness to our logos. Let's change the fixed width to fill container, go into our container and make sure it's also set to fill. And with our logos, let's go into each vector and then select them all, holding shift, go into this drop down and 
uh, click on the flatten selection option, which will give you just one vector file. It's much easier to edit your vector files, like make them responsive once they are just one vector file. Because if let's say I want to change this frame into an O layout and to this image, you will see that uh, it will try to align each of this vector inside of this frame using auto layout. So we don't want that. Uh, just make sure they are flattened. And let's do the same for uh, this logo. And lastly, that one. So now we can add auto layout containers. Just like that. And uh, make sure, yeah, they can be set to hug for now. So let's try to resize it. And you'll see that our design is in fact uh, responsive. So now that we've made sure that all of our elements are set to resize and fill the available container space, let's start making some adjustments to make it responsive on tablet and mobile devices. Okay, so let me just select this desktop frame and duplicate it by hitting Command ND. Uh, change this frame to, let's say, iPad Pro 11 and um, start resizing our uh, header container, our hero container and our logo container. Now that it's resized to the right uh, frame size, I'll just hit Shift and A and turn it into an auto layout frame. I will just go into the header and set it from fix to fill container, change the margins from 96 to 30, go into hero, also make sure it's set to fill container and change the uh, padding on both sides to 30. And I'll do the same with our logos. And for our logos, uh, we can increase the container size to go past the viewport width. And then we're going to development animated so that it's scrolling from left or right infinitely. And for a hero container, uh, we don't need it to be split in left and right column. We can just change uh, the vert layout of our auto layout from horizontal to vertical, select our left column, change the height from fix to a hug. And if we go to our right column, we don't need this image to be this big. So um, we can click on the right column, set it to hug and then resize MacBook Air image. So let's change the uh, resizing on the horizontal axis from fix to fill container and make sure it's still uh, set to fit. And let's move our text to the uh, bottom row, just so the buttons are clickable in the thumbs reach. And we can select this background and make it smaller just so it's not bleeding uh, out to cover our text and our header. And uh, we can add some padding, uh, let's say on the bottom, like 80 pixels or maybe 120 pixels even. Yeah, maybe add uh, 40 on the top, 80 on the bottom, just so it's, um, it's looking uh, a bit better. Uh, let's call it tablet. And let's drag on the edge of the screen and see if it's resizing uh, properly. And we see that it in fact is resizing uh, just fine. So there's only mobile device left. So let's click Command ND and change the frame to iPhone 13 mini. Click on our header, hero and logos and resize them manually here. And you'll see that uh, image uh, is um, acting the right way right now. Uh, but we need to make some small adjustments to the size of our text layers and the, you know, like the size, the padding uh, left on the image, let's say, I, I think it's it's uh, taking up uh, too much space. So let's drag on the edge and resize it and then change the size of this text, let's say 32, which is much more suitable for uh, mobile designs. And we can add a manual, manual break before in and also change the size of this text to let's say 18. Right here, let's change this left padding to 20 and the right padding to 20 as well. And let's remove the top padding to zero and we can leave the bottom padding at 80. Let's click on the container inside of the hero and change the height from 800 to hug. I mean, we don't need this image to be this big, so let's also resize it and make sure it's filling the container on the horizontal axis again. And let's change the padding here from 80 to 40 and our logo has disappeared. So let's click on this frame and turn it into auto layout frame. Okay, and this will, uh, by default, add some spacing. So let's reduce the spacing to zero and let's select our container and holding, well, holding option, just drag on the sides and start changing the width of this container. And now click K and resize our logos just a little bit, just so we can see uh, more of them. And now we can call it a mobile. And now that I'm looking at this hero, I might 
add some padding on top. So let's say we want to add 24 pixels of padding. Okay, now so that we have this model cleaned up, let's go into each container and make sure that it's set to fill. So let's uh, set it on the header, on the container inside of the header. Uh, we can reduce the size of this uh, text logo to let's say 16. On the hero section, we want it to be set to fill container. Our container is set to fill. Right column is also set to fill. Left column set to fill. And we need to clean up our CTA buttons. So let's um, change the uh, resizing from hack to fill and go inside of our container and change the layer from horizontal to vertical. Now go inside of our uh, CTA container, select both of these, these buttons, change the resizing from hack to fill and make sure that your text elements are, are aligned in the center. And uh, change the text to let's say 18 or 16. Yeah, maybe, maybe 16 is fine. One thing left to do is to clean up our logos. We can leave it at fixed and then this we can leave at fixed as well because if we go into development, uh, it won't matter as much. The only thing that's not responsive is this callout. So let's change it from hack to fill maybe just to make it work more seamlessly i'll just change the placement of the avatars and put them on the left and now if i click on the mobile and drag on the edge of the screen you will see that everything is aligning perfectly fine let's um let's zoom out a little bit select all of these frames and see if they are in fact responsive and you see that everything is aligning perfectly with the respective margins and paddings and resizing properties that we set on our auto layout containers and one more thing I didn't mention is that if you set your entire frame to be auto layout, you're, you can now go into your sections and then move them around, test it real quickly, and then see if you want to make some adjustments to the flow of information on your landing page. And the best part about learning auto layout and understanding the box model is that the principles behind auto layout are pretty much the same as those used in web development for CSS Flexbox and CSS Grid. By mastering auto layout in Figma, uh, you'll become much more familiar with web development and you'll be able to decide if your designs are you know, feasible and easy to implement into a real website. And now with the introduction of Figma to HTML plugins, you can now take this entire design and export it into Framer, copy it from your canvas in Figma, paste it inside of your canvas in Framer, adjust the designs really quickly, and you can have this entire hero design replicated in Framer in like 10 minutes or less. Okay, I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you're excited to start creating fully responsive designs inside of Figma. So like I said, if you're interested, drop a comment down below and let me know if you'd like to see a follow-up to this video and in the next part, we'll check this design and create it inside Framer. So be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss it. If you're interested in seeing a full breakdown of how to design responsive layouts, and entire landing pages, check out my Figma Mastery course where we first go through six hours of Figma foundations and end up on a fully responsive landing page design and a working prototype. And we do it step by step. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was your Adrian. I'm signing out and I'll see you very, very soon.